All right, a very good morning and welcome back. This is still one in the morning, just in case you have no idea you're in the right place at the right time. But before we get too far, let's do some magic. Let's interact on our social media, and that includes Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter as well, which is at y244 underscore channel on the ground. But the rest is y244 channel. You can find us, by the way, on TikTok. We dance sometimes. We don't have two left feet here, right? <laughs> but you can find me personally at uh, Brian Sako 101 on all social media platforms. The hashtag is still in the morning. Hashtag Uncle Sako. Anyways, I had to do it. <laughs> But now, welcome to the studio. Today, we have a powerful guest. He's a trailblazer. He's a groundbreaker. When it comes to golf, this guy is living it and loving it. And not just living it. He's living large when it comes to golf. He's, he, he was, you might, have remem you, you might remember him from the Kenya Magical Open. He has so many titles, including when it comes to you know, uh, winning some of the tournaments, especially in that field. You know, sometimes we think it's a very sophisticated uh, sport. Is it true? Does it require you to have some level of money, some level of networks, or is it just a sport that anyone can venture into and become successful and make money? That's the important part. Now, joining us live in studio to live golf with us is Mutahe Kibugo. Thanks for having me, man. Good morning. Morning, morning. By the way, I was so nervous. I didn't know how you'd respond, especially the first time when we spoke. I was like, Sasa. I can pick a stop on tapiti api, by the way. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're in the public domain, and sometimes when you're trying to reach out to some people, yeah. you just don't know what they're dealing with. And sometimes, you know, for a person like you, you're a newsmaker, you know. You talked about the news outlets, in newspapers, you know, and we read about you. Like, I literally had to read about you before I talked to you. Yeah. So, how does even that make you feel? Um, it's, it surprises me most of the time because... I just carry myself as like a kawaii da guy, man. Like I just, I just do my thing. So, so when people struggle like to reach out to me or like don't know what to say when they quite reach out to me, it it, it shocks me quite frankly, because yeah. I'm just, I'm really open to like everyone and anything. I'm a very social guy, so I'm right. always open to hear what everyone has to say and everything. All right, it's just yeah. your approachable. So yeah, there's, exactly. Yeah, there's some DM at yeah. Mutahi underscore. Kibugu, Kibugu on yeah. Instagram. <laughs> now, let's get back to you still, <laughs> still on that uh, social media handle. If a lot of people who don't know you, like, how did, how, how was your making? You know, how did Mutahi Kibugu, the pro golfer, come into being? So, I started golf when I was about five years old. Okay. Five years old, but I started in uh, Kampala, Uganda. Okay. Because I'm actually, I'm, I was actually born in Uganda. Oh, you're born in Uganda. Yeah, okay. I was born in Uganda. Okay. Then I moved back in Kenya over in 2008, 2008, 2009. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so I started there and my dad has just made me like take it up ever since until like today. Right. So I've been playing for quite a long time now, around 17 years. Yeah. And you started uh, at, at, at what age exactly? At five. Five? Five is yeah. too young, bro. To even hold <laughs> a club. <laughs> no, but at that time, you see, you have like these plastic things. So you just hit it around and okay. it's never that serious. I only took it seriously when I was around... 12, 12, 13. That's right. when I started to like really like get addicted. Right. Yeah. Is this some? Uh, but I understand your dad is a veteran, you know, uh, golfer. By the yeah. way, <laughs> his dad is the brother to former CS uh, Mutahi Kagwe. That is Mr. Dan Kagwe, if yes. I'm not right. Yes, sir. Right. So uh, coming from that family of people who are exposed, you know, your 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 your, your dad's uh, brother is in the public domain in government. Your dad is also was also in government yeah. before he left. Yeah. And now. Your dad is a pro golfer. All this publicity and everything. Maybe was it like uh, you guys were pushed as a family to always, you know, steer towards, you know, sophistication? I mean, it just <laughs> came naturally because we are the guys and, you know, this is what we do. I mean, it's a passion uh, or something. I mean, we're just a very passionate family. Like, all from all my close cousins, everyone, everyone does something that they're very passionate about. And it doesn't matter, like, what their passion is. They're going to, they're gonna go for it. Like some of my cousins are musicians, some of them have PhDs in right. psychology, and man, it's 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 insane. Right. Like everyone just chases their dream. Right. Yeah. So it's not it's not like it came from a place of pressure. This was passion. No, it's just passion. Like whatever you picked up when you're young, our our parents would just always support us to do what our heart desires. So right. it's just a place of passion. Yeah. Right. I was reading somewhere in an interview that your dad and your mom did, and uh, they were talking about, you know, how they would have loved you to also, like, do golf, but still pursue another different course, um, a, a different career. Yeah, Is this something that you guys still battle till today, as you pursue golf? 
Uh, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, but um, not really as much now, because uh -huh. um, I'm actually making a living out of it. Right. Yeah, sorry I'm actually that. making. Sorry about that. I'm actually making a living out of it now. Yeah. So, and I'm. I just went full professional. Right. So I'm. Not really anymore now, because I'm actually. I actually have a job now. Like so, it's now a full time job. Yeah, it's and you're making money. Job. It's not just money. A lot of money. Either of you made two million. Your small brother or you who made two million in one of the former. Is it second, two and second last tournaments that um, you played? Yeah, I think I think my brother made about that much in in last years. Oh, last year. Yeah, last year. And so. you made uh, some, some, say, something around this. Same, same, same. <laughs> Feel safe. It's a safe space. <laughs> but uh, but what, what what I read is uh, so the other one made two million, and then some. Uh, I think it's mom who said next time maybe you guys could make even up to one million US dollars. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, on the big tours, yeah, you make up to like a million in prize money for first place. Right. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Like you're young and you're making this big money, and there's people, there's young people like you out there who look up to you. And sometimes even they're not even aware that, you know, this is a very uh, good space where, you know, you, but though you studied it, uh, at some point uh, you mentioned, you know, you went to South Africa University, of, uh, should be you go to University in Johannesburg. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you studied it now professionally and now you're back, you're making money. Yeah. Not just money, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, but it's, it's good enough to survive. I'm okay. It's good enough to survive. <laughs> Lens, lens. <laughs> but now, uh, let's talk about a little bit of when it comes to now your family setup. Uh, yeah. Here you are. I, I, I don't know how many siblings you are. Two? Uh, no, I actually have a bigger brother and a bigger sister. So right. four. Yeah. Uh, four siblings in yeah. total. Now, how does, it, how does it come when it comes to balancing, you know, you're a star, your other brother is a star, and then you guys have to come on the table and share insights. Also, your small brother is still pursuing golf now. Yeah, How do you guys uh, match sibling rivalry <laughs> at times? I know it can be really hard because <laughs> both of you are making money. I mean, no, we just support each other in general. Like uh -huh. we, we give each other our fruits when, it's, when, when they deserve it. Uh -huh. But um, also, I think the competition in our family really helps. All right. I think it really helps. It really helps everyone stay on their toes and like nobody should should fall behind. Right. Yeah. So it's so the competition really helps us. All right. Now, um, yeah, I'd like you to talk about uh, some of the recent tournaments, especially uh, the magical Kenya Open. First of all, how did you get to it? And I understand you are the only Kenyan who represented uh, Kenya in that sport. How did you get to it? How was the selection uh, criterion that they used and finally landed on you to represent the country? Yeah, so in East Africa, we have this tour called the Safari Tour, okay. which, um, which gives a great platform for pros in East Africa, Kenyan pros, to, to play because we don't have much competition here. So you qualify through that, and the top eight Kenyans get into the Kenya Open with two okay. international slots. Okay. So I was the fifth-ranked Kenyan for the year in, in the rankings when I qualified. And then, um, yeah, Kenya Open is our final tournament of, like, of that Safari Tour season. Right. But it's Kenya Open is so big. It's like uh, it's like the finale. Right. Yeah, and it's huge because it's on international level. Right. Yeah. At, at, at what position were you, and was it frustrating at first? Um, what position I was like in the final tally of yeah, like the, the Kenya Open? Tally. I finished. Um, I think it was tied sixtieth, sixty fifth, somewhere okay. there. Sixty sixth. Yeah. Sixty sixth or sixty. Six. I think sixty fifth. I think sixty fifth. All right. Yeah, 65th. I mean, it wasn't frustrating because um, it was my first cut made in such a, in, in such a tournament because that was like world status level. So I was able to get a world ranking, which I, right. I never had. Right. So now that I have the world ranking, I can try and make it for Olympics next year. Right. And uh, yeah, plenty of other goals. But um, no, I mean, I was doing well up until the weekend where I struggled around the weekend. Yeah. Because I was the only Kenyan playing the weekend. And um, yeah, I mean, sometimes I say I didn't really have pressure, but I, I, I did have a bit of pressure going into the weekend because I wasn't used to that uh, scenario. Did you regret maybe, you know, you expected to perform maybe a little bit, you know, higher than that? No, I mean, I, I, tried, I tried my best. You believe you tried your best? Yeah, I tried my best. But you said there was a lot of pressure as well because, you know, the media was on you. I remember that time. They were broadcasting it live in... 
uh, I think a lot of mainstream stations, yeah. and it was Mutahi Kibugu until I had to like, hey, let, let me. <laughs> I, 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 I think I asked if you were doing, but you are too. You are busy. Yeah. You know how was it mentally dealing with that kind of a pressure? You know, media is on you, people are writing, newspapers are writing, and it's broadcasted live on TV. To be honest, I kind of liked it, huh? I you I, liked it? Yeah, I loved it, by the way. Right. I think it, um, it just ins ins inspired me to just keep, keep playing and right. just uh, like keep going. And also like the extra pressure, it, it just, it helps me almost play better, by the way. Right. Like I know I didn't do that well on the weekend, but I would have done really worse without pressure. So it just right. kept me like in the moment. Right. Yeah. Now, also, you know, performance is very important, and I'm sure it's gauged. Uh, so you can you can try you can exactly you know paint for us a picture how they gauge performance, especially when it comes to such tournaments. Like, what exactly happens in the whole sport? In the whole sport, right? So, so professional golf is is four days. Oh, four days. It is four days. Mm -hmm. But you start at a field of one fifty six to anything over that until. Until, um, so it starts Thursday, Friday, where mm -hmm. the whole field plays. And after that, it's, there's a cut. If you are not in the top 60 players and ties going into the weekend, you're cut out from the tournament. And that means you'll never participate? For the for weekend, that, yeah. For that day? Yeah, for the okay. Saturday and Sunday. All right. And you don't get paid mm -hmm. also. Right. Only when you make the cut into the weekend, the top 60 and ties are the ones who get a check from the from the prize fund. Right. Yeah. So that's how it so that's how it works. Right. So it's pretty brutal. It's not like every other sport where you have um, a certain contract where you get like a, m a monthly salary or weekly salary like football. Right. Like if you if you don't perform week in week out, right. you can go 2 to 3 months without making a check. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but then you're still interacting with these, you know, uh, good people of golf. Yeah, you see you see you see them every weekend. Right. I mean, every like tournament. Right. It's just that if you don't perform on the weekends, they're staying and playing. Right. And you're, you have to fly home because you have to go to your next destination. That's really sad though. Yeah, it is. It's the, it's the brutal side of golf not a lot of, right. not a lot of people see. So, right. yeah. But it's also associated with, uh, you know, like I said in the intro, people who have, you know, I don't know if it's a myth, but you'll try to demystify it. Yeah. Is it golf is always... As they, Especially what we've read and you know watched, it's always associated with people who have a certain amount of money. You know, they have a certain levels of networks as well as wealth, which is an asset as well. So, yeah. is it true though that for you to you know reach some certain ranks, you must be a person of a certain caliber to even play as well, even including these golf clubs? Um, I would say, I would say. Um a lot of a lot of um, guys play golf for leisure. Right. So and if you do want to start, then the equipment is 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 expensive. Right. Yeah, like. And you'll talk about that because we have <laughs> we have one in studio here as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that. Maybe if if you want to start, it is it is quite expensive to start, but uh -huh. it's becoming more accessible for people who want to start. Like um, there's this uh, public golf course. It's called Golf Park Gong Race Course. Right. So if you want to. If you're a beginner, that's right. a great place to start because right. it's, it's not expensive and uh, they're open to anyone who wants to come play. Right. So yeah, that's a great place to start the golf. So it is becoming more accessible. Right. So hopefully in future they can try and do something about it, build more, introduce more schools into, into golf, in just going to hit in open fields. There right. are plenty of golf clubs that are not used that can be donated and everything. So. Those are ideas I have that I, I really want to spread. You, like you feel like when you get a platform, but I feel like you already have a platform to share them, anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of growing it and uh, yeah, just trying to inspire and show guys that it's like that stereotype that we can we can break it down. Yeah. Still on that, do you feel like uh, let me use a, a crazy or a good example, uh, a person from a place like Huicero, you know, in the interiors of Western? Yeah. Would you recommend them to start playing golf because? In such a place, they're still struggling, first of all, to even read about electricity and experience, you know, uh, good education and, yeah. and, and trying to, you know, recover from the shackles of traditional life. Would you recommend, like, you know, they should also pursue golf? Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah. 
hundred percent. There's a golf course in every county in in uh, in Kenya. Why? In every county in Kenya, and there's always a local professional right. at these golf courses. Right. And these these professionals are trained to get people into the game. Right. And uh, no, you don't have to start from being a player standpoint, uh -huh. but you can also get um, just introduced to the game. Right. There's always there's always people that will help you like right. into the game. You might not necessarily pay at the start. You don't have to pay. But yeah. um but yeah professional but golf most in Kenya golf clubs do charge. Most golf most most golf clubs do charge. Right. Most golf clubs do charge. Which is which is a problem which is why it's not quite accessible. Right. But um yeah but that idea going back to like the schools and everything and just helping donate and stuff and like me like I, I actually want to start going to different places in, like in Kenya like doing outreach now yeah doing outreach and just try mm -hmm. get uh, get people to do that because one of my friends from Uganda his name is Sally um, he he does like the same thing and he's really inspiring like youth in Uganda to to start yeah so so I, I want to try to do the same thing all right. Yeah. Is that maybe a way the government has come in, especially when it comes to now uh, doing outreach in our country that you talk about and say, yes, there's a possibility or it's already there and maybe a lot of people are not aware? Um, it, it's already there. The Junior Golf Foundation okay. is, is trying to do that. Uh, so, yeah, so they're starting a bit slowly, but I think it will pick up and they'll, they'll be good. So hopefully it grows and that initiative reaches everyone. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, before we get to the kit here um i would also like you to uh just paint for us a picture like what are some of the stages for a starter if you have to now like go enroll to a club how do you go about it from day one enrolling maybe training yeah. now you start playing like uh take us through that uh chain or that cycle so you just you just get the basics like you start slowly try to get contact with the ball yeah. and uh try find some technique doesn't technique matter. Technique is very important. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But at the start, you know, you don't have to be thoroughly on technique. You just have to hit the ball. Okay. Yeah. So once you do that, then now you start playing, actually going on the golf course. All right. Because where we practice is called the range. Right. So you actually go on the golf course, and then how you build in the game is you get a handicap. A handicap? What does that mean? A handicap now is the level of golf that you're at. It is, it's basically your level. So for men, sorry, I haven't had one in a while because I'm a person, but <laughs> yeah. I think women starts at 52 uh -huh. and uh, it actually goes down. So the okay. lower your handicap, the better you are. Oh. 52 going down. So if you are 21 handicap, you're better than a 32 handicap. The and lesser. Yeah, and men starts at 28. Uh -huh. So it should be down. dropping or? In, uh, it should be dropping. dropping. Yeah. All right. So at, at what point does someone become you now? <laughs> I'm using you <laughs> as the SI unit here. <laughs> um, probably after they get that, all, when they minus the handicap all the way from 28 to zero. Okay. And then when they're able to maintain the zero handicap and play at a certain level often. Right. Like a golf course is a, what's called a par 72. Right. So all the holes par. add up to 72. Uh, I'm stuck at the par. What does par mean now for somebody who doesn't understand? Because I understand there's a lot of jargon in there. Yeah, Buddy, the par, you mentioned a caddy. Yeah. Right. So a par, a par is the score you're supposed to make on every hole. So there's short, um, long holes, and there's also holes that are medium. Right. So the par is the, is the number. So for short holes, it's called a par three. Part three, that's a short yeah. hole. That's a I short wish I was hole. writing, but in Tandi Kaba in the Yeah, yeah, but that. And the and the and the lad you fika kwakadi. I'm still stuck there. <laughs> yeah, so right. now the caddy is the one who helps you and carries so, your bag. So, do we have it here? Do we have like a caddy here? No, no, no. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a person. My my caddy, I have caddies like everywhere. So some guys in South Africa, who I hire when I'm there, like okay. uh, they help me. And uh, some guys in Kenya at the golf courses. Yeah, right. so they just carry your bag and, and they supply you some information like on the golf Look course. at me now. Look <laughs> at... Bro. Silence, your parts. 
<laughs> but uh, uh, we have a kit here. We have a kit here in the studio, and I'd like you to uh, break it down to us. Uh, what is in here? What isn't here? Yeah. So oh, what is here? What in is the, in so this everything. Kit. Yeah. So everything is here. So this is the club I use the most. It's oh, called. It's called a club. It's called yeah, but the mm. club is called a putter. A putter. Yeah. And it has a number or something. It has a. It has a number there. Right. So it's just. So this is what you use when you get on the, what's called the green. <laughs> but it's very heavy. Ah, the, it's it's very top. heavy. Yeah. Like in the so, shape it's and it's number five. Yeah, you can see it's number five. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, yeah. White then, hot. Then you have all these other clubs which are used for different places. So right. when you are. So they, they both play a different role? Yeah, they all play, they all play different roles. In total, you mentioned there are 14 yeah. in number. Yeah. So how do you start now from the first club till Ufika number 14? Uh, so you start from what's called in golf, is called the tee box, the tee ground. Tee ground. Yeah. Okay. So from the tee ground, this is where you hit the ball, uh -huh. going to next what's called the fairway. Fair? The fairway. fairway. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Continue. And, and from the fairway, you go to the green. So okay. this is where you use this thing to putt. Or putting. Yeah. yeah. So like mini golf. Mm -hmm. So like in mini golf, you use the putter. So like, so yeah. So that's, those are the stages. So right. in between, you'll, you can use any of these clubs. Right. Like to do, to hit how far you want or um, the certain shot you want to play. All right. Yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to stand and just uh, pick one and demonstrate because I understand there's also uh, there's also a certain posture. Yeah. <laughs> At some point I tried it and I couldn't <laughs> hack it, bro. What is going on? Ni pesa zinitaki amani university mekata. I tried. So there's a way you hold it. Uh, so you can pick one of them that yeah, you're sure, comfortable. You can do that. You. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll just pick a small one. Right. I mean, not, I don't want to be too aggressive. Right. So what do you so mean? You have, you have the... The ball? The, the ball, yeah. I have a ball, yeah. Okay. But let me not hit it. I might, uh, I might break something in the, in the yeah, studio. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> please don't. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so the ball is here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll put the club like right, right. behind it. Is it usually direct on, on the ground or there's like a, a, a support material or something? Yeah, you can, you can put it on a tee. Oh, it's but called a T. Yeah, it's called yeah. a T. The support. I can also show you what that is. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is a T. Right. So you just put it into the ground and then the ball on top. Okay. Yeah. So you'll just hold the club. You can hold the club in many ways. There's yeah. what's called baseball where you hold 10 fingers. Right. There's interlock well, interlock like this. Right. Or I will just hold it any other way. You know, when you're starting, you don't really have to right. do anything. Yeah. So you just stand. Yeah. Most people stand very wide, like you're so hitting. There's also baseball. posture and position of the legs. Yeah. Okay. Like your knees have to be bent. Okay. Your your back tilted over. Right. And uh, yeah, from this position, that's. And that's how you swing. Is it kicking, scooping, or just demolishing? <laughs> <laughs> it's just hitting. Uh, hitting. Yeah. yeah. You know, bigger you But then uh, uh, my question again is: uh, usually, when you guys hit the ball uh, to some place, it goes and stays there. Yeah. And then that's when the caddy comes in. To pick the ball? Um, so the caddy... Of oh, the caddy assistant so the, carrying for he, you he the kit. Carrying, but also he's, uh -huh. he helps you make certain decisions on, on, the on what to do. Because yeah. okay. he also has a lot of knowledge on golf. Right. So he's actually very essential to any player. He's like an assistant. Nikama referee, Sasa. Referee or linesman. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> basically, he just keeps you in check and uh, right. also the rules in check, yeah. All right, but you even have an umbrella as well because yeah. it's like you're all, all, all round when it comes to uh, golf. Uh, we, we, which one have we used now? Club number? That was a uh, club number. It was uh, called uh, a, a P. It's called oh. a pitching wedge. Ah, which other one as well? There's a four, there's a six, there's a five. All right. Then there's the one, which is the driver. Uh, this is the one a lot of people know me for. Because right, I, uh, I tend to hit the ball. Uh, are you able to far. show it to us as well? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's do it's a little bit longer. Yeah, it's a little bit longer. So now right. this is what guys mainly use, like off the tee. Right. So the so they mainly use this off the tee. Yeah. 
Does the ball size also now vary when it comes to this one as compared to the number, the, the, the other one that we use? I know you play the same ball. Same, same ball yeah, size. Yeah, you play the same ball. Because it, uh, All right. But this one just goes farther. If you want to hit it far, then you use right. the big one. All right. Yeah. So then also I'm confused. At what point do you keep on changing now from the smaller one to a bigger one during the tournament? That's, that's now where distances come in. All right. Yeah. So like we play in yards. Oh, yards. So, yeah. So if I have 220 yards to the flag, right. I'll use one of the longer ones. Right. If I have 80 yards, I'll use one of the shorter ones. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move away from that. Uh, the last time we spoke, you told me you were in, a, in, in, was it Zambia or Zimbabwe? Uh, I was in Zimbabwe, yeah. All right. Uh, you had gone there for a tournament as well. Please talk about it. And uh, how was your performance? Uh, how was the whole experience? And, and when did you come back in the country? I came back um, last week, last week, Monday. Uh -huh. Yeah, around last week, Monday. Uh, my, my experience was good. So, uh -huh. so I quali just qualified to play on this international tour called Sunshine Tour. Right. So, uh, so yeah. So, it's, it's, be it's been good so far. Right. So, I just made my, my second cut on it, on this international level. Right. And uh, I finished tied 33. Going to the last day, I was tied 18th, I think. Right. And I just struggled. But the thing is, with golf, we're so bunched up, so your, your position can change at any time if you let your concentration go. Right. Yeah, so I finished tied 33rd. Right. And uh, yeah, it wasn't a bad performance. Uh -huh. and, uh, you got paid for it? Huh? <laughs> you got paid for it as well? Yeah, I got paid for it, yeah. Oh my goodness. You know when you pass that too, bro? <laughs> center. I'm also trying to find your recent one. I think I had captured it somewhere. Uh, let me see if, yes. Uh, this one is the Zimbabwe Open, which you finished. Uh, you're calling it T33. T yeah. All right. Uh, and, and then also you are in the Players' Championships of Africa at uh, Dain Fenfan Golf Club. Yeah. And you finished at the T48 position yeah. as well. Uh, talk yeah, about that, yeah. the South African one. Yeah, and the uh, South African was really nice because um, uh, I'm now starting to break out there right. in South Africa. And there's plenty of opportunities there spreading into Europe right. and uh, going into Asia. Right. So, yeah, I'm starting to do, really do well there and getting starts in, uh, in other countries as well. Right. Yeah. So you get to just travel alone now because uh, <laughs> you're, above, you're above 22 anyways. You know? Yeah. But uh, yeah. I, I read I, I, in an article that I read, uh, it is a little bit difficult for your brother to just let you go all the time. So it's like we either go together or you stay at home or let's go <laughs> as a family now. But at this point, it's now you. So you're traveling all alone. And I remember at some point we had a conversation that was like, I was asking you, how does it feel to just always change airports from this airport to this other? And you're like, you know, sometimes it's boring, but you love it anyways. Yeah. Right. You know, the good thing is when I was, when I was on national team, like when I was an amateur, right. when I used to play for the Kenya team, um, I used to travel with like 10 guys or yeah. like- For your crew now. Yeah. For, for us players now who are representing Kenya. Okay. So I, and I started when I was very young, when I was like 13. I entered like the national team, the senior team. Right. So, so they always used to bully me, man. And I was always used, always, but bully me like from a fan. They're just trying to make me grow up, yeah. So, to tease you. Yeah, to tease me. <laughs> Teasing, yeah. Yeah. So, so it was, it was nice. And uh, the fact that we went all different places, it got me used to traveling at a very young age. Right. So by the time I reached 17, 16, I was already used to going places alone. Right. Yeah. Sorry. All right, uh, we only have four minutes and then we exit. But uh, uh, before we get to the fun part, we're going to play a different, uh, a, a little bit of a game. And I hope you hack it because <laughs> I'll put you on the spot. Uh, yeah. Also, when it comes now to, uh, especially your background now, because you come from a very prominent family. And you mentioned some of your relatives are musicians, the rest of Kinaka Hush, Kinaka uh, Do you feel like maybe it, so if people were to judge you, maybe let's say 30 years later, maybe you're retiring, and people are to get of, of course social media people will always give an opinion and somebody says maybe they think you come from a place of privilege yeah uh, would you take it or would you you know feel some type of way about it how would that make you feel if somebody say ah it's because he comes from a place of privilege and of course i'm sure you've heard people say that yeah 100 percent. all right 100%. how does it make you feel do you just take it like it's normal or sometimes you just want to prove to people that you guys, it's not what you think. I work hard for this. I have school. In fact, you've studied golf professionally. Yeah, no, 100%. Right. No, I mean, um, I've, like, um, I'm very blessed to have, had, to have had the opportunity to, to start golf and everything. 
So, like I thank God every day for that, man. And uh, so, no, I, I don't feel a type of way. But there are certain stories, there are certain people I've grown up with who, who have taught me how life is at a very young age. So, a lot of people see me and they don't, they don't really know who I am or where I've come from or what I've, what I've had to do or yeah. the situations I've been in to be like where I am now. Right. Because a lot of people see the glory a lot, you know. Yeah, they don't, they don't see behind They don't the see scenes. the story, you know. Yeah, they don't, see, <laughs> they don't see you coming home nine at night. Right. Just, and you left home 5 a.m. And the training as well. Because yeah. it's blunt, sweat, and tears. So for you to become, in fact, uh, the, in, the, in this book called The Leader Who Had No Title, uh, uh, Robin Sharma talks about the 10,000 hour rule, yeah. where it means for you to be a master or to master an art, you must have learned it for over five years. Close to 10,000. Actually, 10 years, that's yeah. close to 10,000 hours. Yeah, 100%. Right. Yeah, 100%. Man, golf is like any sport nowadays, but you have to be an athlete. Right. And, um, I don't only look at my role models as golfers. I look at, I try to pick things from athletes from every other sport. Like, um, like I see, I see Collins and Jarrah once in a while on right. golf course because he recently started it, and uh, he really likes it. So you're friends with Omanyala as well. <laughs> <laughs> You've met him? No, no, I've never, I've never met Omanyala, but I, I would love to meet him. And it's a big inspiration right. for for me and plenty of other guys. I would just love to, so I just love to pick different athletes' brains and just see like their journey and, and what they did to overcome diversity. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's, that's one thing for me. You must be really a groundbreaker actually to break that because <laughs> huh. it's a very crazy barrier, you know, diversity. Yeah, yeah, no, it, no, it is a hundred percent. Just, um, I just don't look at golf as, as golf. I think of it as a, another sport. Right. So, so yeah, for me, I just, I just pick up different things from everywhere because I think it can help me in my own sport. All right. Yeah. Uh, who, who are some of the, let's say, uh, role models as well as uh, the ones you've interacted with a lot who are yeah. so high on the rugs and when you met them, you were so humble. And as much as you know, you're also got in the space, but you are humbled when you met them. Um, so on international level, I've met a lot of professional golfers that... Uh, that uh, I really liked and that were a big inspiration to me. When I was young, I used to look at uh, guys like Greg Snow, uh, this Tiger Woods. Deza, Tiger Woods. I haven't met Tiger Woods, but I'm, I'm going to very soon. You'll meet him. Yeah, but, man. But, lo but a lot of local guys I took inspo in still, like this person, Deza, Greg Snow. Uh -huh. um, people who have become my rivals today, like idols came into rivals. So, yeah, so that was From our country? Cool. Is he from? Yeah, yeah, from, from our country. Okay. Yeah, from Kenya. All right. And uh, yeah, other like athletes, man, who who I've met, like Collins and Jeremy, like that was a big inspiration for me. And you Kipchoge? Did within. No, met I, him? Yeah, I, I haven't met Kipchoge also, right. but uh, it's also a big inspiration, also a big inspiration for me. And uh, I listen to a lot of his his interviews and quotes. And uh, man, the guy is too wise, bro. Right. So yeah, it's God. definitely someone I would I would love to meet. Okay. Very soon. Yeah. Hashtag God on God. So here's where we play a game, and it gets it gets easier now. <laughs> so oh, which one do you choose? Uh, I'd like you to choose because we're out of time, anyways. Would you never have I ever or kill Mary Slap Dead Mary Slap friend zone? Which one would you want to go to? Never have I ever or kill Mary Slap Dead. <laughs> choose uh, which? I'll do very simple question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll do uh, never have I ever. Never have I ever. Yeah. Why are you running from relationship ones? But I see, I see what you've done. I see what you've done. So, never have I ever smoked weed. Uh, I've never. No, no, no. You've ever? No, I've, I've, I've never. You never smoked weed. Okay, yeah. okay. Never have I ever sneaked out of home. Yeah, I have. I have you a, have. A few times. A few times. A few Where times, are you going yeah. to? Who are you going to meet? <laughs> but anyways, uh, the third one as we, uh, as we finish. Never have I ever lied to my mom about a situation that I have going on. Uh, no, I think everyone has done that. Everyone does that. Yeah, I think everyone has done that. But why though? And then the fourth one. Never have I ever faked a situation to escape from punishment. Yeah, I have. Yeah. 
Big time. Big yeah, time. Big time. <laughs> big time. We're not going to go into detail, but big okay. time. Okay. Uh, the fifth one. Never have I ever stolen money from dad or mom, and they were never aware of it till today. <laughs> <laughs> they are not even aware I took this big amount of money. <laughs> uh, that, that one used to be kawaida. For everyone. You only come okay, come down. And then the second last one. Never have I ever drank the harshest... Uh, the harshest brand of vodka. Uh, yeah, 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 I have. You have. Yeah, and then the last one, Sasa, yeah. then we exit. Never have I ever bullied someone. No, that one, that one I haven't. But you were bullied. <laughs> I mean, I was bullied because I was just really a small kid. Right? Like, right. I only just grew up the other day. Like, this beard, I, mean, no. I don't even know where it came from. Yeah. I've always been... It's a blessing, you know. Uh, some uh, beard gang. Yes. <laughs> you you really have to have go, have some good hormones to get through that. <laughs> yeah, um, man. but uh, we have come to the end of the interview. But uh, I'd also like you to uh, share or uh, what are some of the tournaments that people should expect. Of course, you're a newsmaker. <laughs> you're Googleable, meaning somebody you can Google and you just read about them. But what are some of the tournaments that people can expect? And what are some of the good things you have in store? For me, I'd say launch a podcast so that we come in. Especially me, the young sana since I'm a talker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's your cabra. Ah, okay. Um, I'm heading to Germany on the 28th for the DP World Tour Championship there. It's called the Porsche Open. So I'll be heading there. And then I will be coming back to Kenya, uh, playing some few tournaments here, and then heading down south. So, yeah, exciting few months. And uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. But I remember to say hi to Kakush, Mwambie, to Namtaka, Apo Hawaii, to Fefo, including ah, Kagwe. Lazima. Ah, yeah. ah that's a must. Uh, oh, you're oh, yeah. in the country again? Uh, UK. Oh, he's in the UK? Yeah. He just, just disappeared off social media. Yeah, just re recording, man. Okay. He's grinding. He's Miss you as Let stuff. him cook. Miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, we appreciate your time. And I think it was a blessing. You know, I think we interacted at some place years back, but look, yeah. the universe. It's just interesting. It all comes around. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Thank you so much for gracing our studios and for your time and for your insights. And we wish you the very best of luck, even as you represent and put Kenya on the map. So, thanks, man. Yes. Thank you. We have been speaking to Mutahi Kabugu. Now you know him and anything else he has to offer, especially for the country, definitely you are in the know. And at this point, here's where we end it. But you can always interact with us on our socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at one 2 4 underscore channel, everywhere on the gram. Mine's is a brand, Sako 101, and we wish you a fantastic Tuesday. See you next time, right here.